Welcome to the CBOS Farming Training video. In this video, we explore the factors to consider when selecting sites that are suitable for CMOS production. The selection of a suitable site for your CMOS farm is a key factor in determining its success or failure. When selecting a site, check for the following. Coral, sign of seaweed growing naturally, distance from river or fresh water, salinity, temperature, tidal range, water movement and nutrients, bottom type, water depth, and sunlight. Let's examine these further. Coral. Avoid places where there are lots of coral reefs because they attract small fish that will eat your sea moss. Signs of seaweed growing naturally. If seaweed or seagrass is growing naturally in an area, then this likely means that your sea moss farm can survive. Some of the seaweed to look for include manatee grass, turtle grass, and other sea moss species like Gracilaria. Distance from river or fresh water. If your site is too close to a river or fresh water source, this may make it more difficult for the sea moss to grow. And if they do, the quality may not be very high. Rivers can also be the source of sediment that can suffocate the sea moss, especially after heavy rains. Salinity. This refers to the level of salt in the water. Sea water salinity for sea moss cultivation can range between 23 and 38 parts of salt per 1,000 parts of water, parts per thousand or PPT. The average salinity of sea water is 35 PPT. It is important to know the rainfall pattern and amount in the area being considered since this can impact sea water salinity as well as the process of solar drying of the sea moss harvested. Temperature. Too much exposure to sun will mean stress for the sea moss and even kill it. Any area being considered for sea moss cultivation should have a water temperature range between 25 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. In shallow waters, the water temperature can become high, especially during sunny days and would not be suitable for seaweed cultivation. Tidal range. Tidal range refers to the difference between high tide and low tide. Areas that end up with very shallow water during low tide should be avoided for seamus cultivation. Water movement and nutrients. Wind-driven currents bring all the nutrients seamus needs in order to grow. In rough waters, it may be difficult to install lines or rafts or cultivate sea moss generally. Conversely, if the bay is too sheltered, there may not be enough movement to keep the sea moss free of sediment. Therefore, moderate water movement is most preferred for sea moss cultivation as opposed to strong water currents like those noticed in the vicinity of reef edges or in reef channels. Since water movement and the inflow of nutrients is extremely important for CMOS cultivation, it is critical to consider sites where there is constant exchange of seawater, such as with the changing of the tides and sufficient water movement, such as created by waves. The water current should not be too strong, as strong currents can damage farms and even wash away CMOS lines, planting materials, and moving anchors. Bottom type. A white, sandy bottom with the presence of some natural seagrass is probably the best location to cultivate sea moss. If the bottom is covered with seagrass, the sea moss will not grow very well. This is because other seaweeds might compete with the sea moss by absorbing the nutrients from the water. A sea bottom with coral will make it difficult to secure stakes as anchors. Additionally, herbivorous fish generally live and aggregate around corals, and they can feed on your sea moss, negatively impacting growth and production. A muddy bottom is also not appropriate because silt or mud will smother the plants and highly turbid water will also limit the amount of sunlight reaching the plants. Water depth and sunlight. 
It is essential to consider the water depth while selecting the area of cultivation. This will inform on the ease at which farmers can set up and manage their farms, the skills needed to undertake seamless production such as swimming capabilities and the use of a boat in water that is deeper than six feet, as well as the farming methods or strategies to be employed. Although sea moss can grow well in shallow water, it might get exposed to the sun and wind. This can result in the growing tips getting destroyed and bleaching of the plants when exposed for extended periods of two to three hours. Furthermore, the plants can suffer severe stress, break and drift away, leading to major losses to the farmers.